I wanted to go over uh, another component in my system. We've already talked about the inverter and the monitoring and how that's all set up. And what I wanted to explain to you today is this. This is the Orion Smart Charge. So in this system, and especially once I take it to the boat, I want this to be a standalone and for 110 power to run an air conditioner or whatever else I want to run that way, which I can put in one of the boat closets or somewhere. But this, and, and this will be the part that has its own solar panel. I do not want to modify the house system. I don't want to be adding components to it. I don't want to be messing around with what came factoring on the boat. So this Orion charger will let me take extra power. And that's really what it is. This battery on this charger from that solar panel goes into float, which means it's completely full at around 1030 if I'm not running an air conditioner all night. And so there's the there's a lot of sun being brought in here that is wasted, you know, unless I'm running these guys. Um, so I don't want that to be the situation. So on the boat, I would want that power then once this guy has hit 14.2, which is where it's about to float, this will kick up. And it, sent, it draws power from the inverter bus bars, brings it in here, once the battery hits 14.2, and then sends it back out to these bus bars, which feed my old batteries from my boat, which would be your, your boat house system. You could do this too if you wanted to have a second battery bank and dedicate it just to 12 volt. So what I'm doing with these batteries here is I am running my uh, 12 volt fridge, along with just a little switch of lights and accessories in here, and I recharge some things for in the house, anything USB can be plugged in here. And so it's not interfering. These minor loads do not take away from my ability to invert and have power running to where I need it in the house or to any equipment that I'm using. So this is a way to isolate the two functions. This would be 110 coming off the big battery. And then this would be the 12 volt stuff coming off the older batteries. Now, of course, with the, the, the big system, I have gone ahead and hooked up another couple of USB outlets in a cigarette so I can run the fridge off of them if I need to. But primarily, I would like that function to be done off the old batteries, hence this guy. Now, these are wonderful. I, I, I love Victron, as you can tell. And this you can program. I was... Uh, 30 years in IT and programming. So for me, this is a thrill, but it's basic, simple programming. So what I've told this to do is when this battery hits 14.2, I want you to come on and then I allow it to run uh, charging these other batteries and drawing what it needs to all the way until this battery hits 12.5, um, which 12.5 is the full indicator for the, the lithium. I don't want this and these and the house batteries drawing my main battery below full. So I've always got it there sitting waiting for whatever I need to use it for. And it works absolutely fantastic. Now on the house bank here, I've also got the old solar panel, 100 watt feeding these sending two bus bars, which plugs into those. But um, this is what I'm primarily using to get that guy topped off. And it is absolutely fantastic. The draw from this is uh, pretty intense if, you're, if you've run your batteries all the way down. Uh, running these, these two guys all night to support this fridge does tend to drop them. And so when this guy kicks on at 14.2, he'll put a significant hit on the, the lithium battery until he's got them to a, a nice close to a float state. And then you don't even notice it. I mean, it just runs and... and uh, it's fine. Then at night, um, or once this battery goes into float, and then when the solar controller brings it down to, to full, it will, over time, after once it hits a float at 14.2, or fully charged, it'll start uh, dropping volts and dropping what's coming in until this battery eventually settles down to 13.5 and begins to float. And at that point, this guy kicks off. So it completely manages itself, and it's absolutely fantastic. This one is 12 volts in to 12 volts out because my inverter side is 12 volts and the houseboat side is 12 volts and only 18 amps going through and that's all you need. 
I mean, uh, for the, for this particular setup. But this is how I'm going to, these two cables, instead of where they are here, the output, will go to my boat house battery bank. And then the only other thing I'll need to connect to the house bat, all I'll do is have two 10 gauge cables go into the house battery bank, no more modifications to the house boat system. And then the only other thing would be the, the Victron <laughs> Servo. This little cable here lets me monitor the state of the batteries. So I would connect that to the uh, house battery, one small cable, and then good old Servo will tell me how full they are while it's also monitoring this. I absolutely love this. This is fantastic. But um, just wanted to explain to you the use behind this and how I'm separating the two batteries. And my thought process is that this is how I will send power from the solar panels once this guy is full over to the house bank. Yeah, but you can do that too if you want to separate your 12 volt loads like I've done here from your 110 loads. Okay, that's it. I love Victron and this is a fantastic uh, charger.